Hello everyone, I am Dr. Furkan Gözükara. Today, I am going to explain to you what are solid design principles. I will compose a .NET Core 7 WPF project to demonstrate each one of the principles of the solid design in c -sharp programming language. I believe that the best methodology for learning something is doing an actual programming example. The code written in this lecture will be uploaded to our public GitHub repository so that you can download and use it yourself. I will put the link of the of the repository in the description of the video. So let's start with composing our WPF project. You see, I have uh, clicked create a new project in Visual Studio Community Edition and I have filtered the result with WPF. There are two versions of WPF. The first one is WPF application, which is .NET Core. And there is also another version, which is WPF of .NET Framework. .NET Framework is the older one and it is not updated anymore so we be careful with that i am picking the dot wpf application with net core and let's pick our folder name as uh, solid design principles i will pick the net 7 standard term support okay so our application is starting so uh, let's quickly review and uh, understand what are the solid design principles and why do we need them okay why do we need solid design principles as a developer we start developing applications using our experience and knowledge but over time the applications might arise bugs we need to alter the application design for every change request or for a new feature request after some time we might need to put a lot of effort, even for simple tasks, it might require the full working knowledge of the entire system. But we can't blame change or new feature requests as they are part of the software development. We can't stop them and refuse them either. So who is the culprit here? Obviously, it is the design of the application. Okay, this is so true. I have 13 years of software development experience and I assure you that you will have to uh, fix and improve so many parts of your application after its initial release you will encounter bugs and you will you will get a uh, new feature requests so if you design your application with following the uh, state order of art uh, principles then you will have less problems okay this is why solid design principles is really important uh, in application development. So let's continue reading. Advantages of solid design principles in C Sharp. As a developer, while you are designing and developing any software applications, then you need to consider the following points. Maintainability. Nowadays maintaining the software is the biggest challenge for the industry. Day by day the business grows for the organization and as the business grows you need to enhance the software with new changes. So you need to design the software in such a way that it should accept future changes with minimum effort and without any problem. Okay, I am pretty sure that you have already uh, noticed this uh, in the applications that you use in your real life. You see that your applications uh, always gets new updates and gets new features. Uh, so, uh, this is something that you can't avoid in your software development life. Testability Test-driven development, TDD, is one of the most important key aspects nowadays when you need to design and develop a large-scale application. We need to design the application in such a way that we should test each individual functionalities. Okay, this is another thing in the nowadays programming uh, trends that uh, your code has to be automatically testable. This is also mandatory in continuous uh, development and continuous integration uh, uh, scheme uh, following application development. Okay. Flexibility and extensibility. Nowadays, flexibility and extensibility both are very much required for enterprise applications. 
so we should design the application in such a way that it should be flexible so that it can be adapted to work in different ways and extensible so that we can add new features easily with minimum modifications. Okay, this is also another important thing and when we follow correct design principles, we won't have a hard time to achieve this. Parallel development. The parallel development of an application is one of the most important key aspects. As we know it is not possible to have the entire development team will work on the same module at the same time. So we need to design the software in such a way that different teams can work on different modules. The solid design principles and design patterns play an important role in achieving all of the above key points. All right. The solid design principles in C Sharp are the design principles that basically use to manage most of the software design problems that generally we encountered in our day-to-day -day programming. These design principles are provided with some mechanism that will make the software designs more understandable, flexible, and maintainable. What is the main reason behind most of the unsuccessful applications? The following are the main reasons for most of the software failures. Putting more functionalities on classes. In the simple word a lot of functionalities we are putting into the class even though they are not related to the class. Implementing tight coupling between the classes. If the classes are dependent on each other, then a change in one class will affect the other classes also. How to overcome the unsuccessful application development problem. We need to use the correct architecture, i.e. MVC, layered, three-tier, MVP, and so on, as per the project requirements. As a developer, we need to follow the design principles, i.e. solid principles. Again, we need to choose the correct design patterns as per the project requirements. Introduction to solid design principles in C Sharp. The solid design principles are basically used to manage most of the software design problems that generally as a developer we face in our day-to-day -day programming. Solid principles represent five design principles that basically use to make the software designs more understandable, flexible, and maintainable. Solid acronym. Okay, this is important. Uh, usually, nowadays, in the job interviews, they are asking you what does uh, solid mean? They are asking you to explain each one of these design principles. Uh, I have been asked it actually. And so let's try to uh, memorize and understand them. S stands for the single responsibility principle, which is also known as SRP. Okay, don't worry that uh, I will explain each one of these principles with details. O stands for the Open Closed Principle, which is also known as OSP. L stands for the Liskov Substitution Principle, which is also known as LSP. I stand for the Interface Segregation Principle, which is also known as ISP. D stands for Dependency Inversion Principle, which is also known as DIP. What are the advantages of using solid design principles in C Sharp? We will get the following advantages of using solid design principles in C Sharp. Achieve the reduction in complexity of the code. Increase readability, extensibility, and maintenance. Reduce error and implement reusability. Achieve better testability. Reduce tight coupling. Okay, so uh, actually we can say that each one of these is matching these ones. Uh, the first one achieves reduction in complexity of the code with single responsibility because each class is responsible for only one thing, okay, one job, and it reduces complexity. Uh, you see, open closed principle increases readability, extensibility, and maintenance uh, because uh, our code will be uh, closed to modify, but it will be open to extend. And uh, with a uh, list of substitution principle, we will reduce error and implement reusability. It will allow us to reuse our code uh, as much as possible with easiness. 
and with interface segregation principle we will achieve better testability and with dependency inversion principle we will reduce tight coupling okay so let's start uh, programming uh, with single responsibility principle okay uh, so let's quickly read uh, what it, does it do what is it uh, what is the meaning of it what is the single responsibility principle in c sharp the single responsibility principle in c sharp states that each software module or class should have only one reason to change in other words we can say that each module or class should have only one responsibility to do. So we need to design the software in such a way that everything in a class or module should be related to a single responsibility. That does not mean your class should contain only one method or property, you can have multiple members, methods or properties, as long as they are related to a single responsibility or functionality. So, with the help of SRP in c -sharp, the classes become smaller and cleaner and thus easier to maintain. Okay, so you see why it is becoming easier to maintain. So let's start with uh, coding. The first example is the opposite of single responsibility. Uh, assume that we have invoice class. Let's start implementing it. All right. Okay, so the first example will be... Uh, example that uh, violates single responsibility principle okay by the way i have written this correct i think okay let's make it like this okay example that violates single responsibility Okay. All right. So let's add a class. I'm going to add single responsibility violation class. And I will copy paste the code here. All right. Okay. So, what do we have? Let's analyze it. We have a class invoice. Uh, it has a long invoice amount. We have daytime invoice date. They are, uh, as you can see, uh, attributes. Okay. And we have add invoice method. Uh, you see it in add invoice method we are also sending an email okay and if the, if an error happens we are also logging the error so this method actually doing okay, this method actually uh, doing three separate things uh, with direct implementation and we have delete invoice method which also logs as you can see here and we have sent invoice in, invoice email all right and okay okay so with this way we are violating uh, our uh, principle why uh, because um, we are doing three separate things in a single class like this okay let me show single responsible violation okay let's say class and here we are just calling okay these are not public or okay um oh we need to generate one second okay we don't need actually let's generate it like this 
violated invoice or let's say incorrect invoice and incorrect invoice dot add invoice okay like this so this usage is not correct way okay how then if it is incorrect then how can we fix this to fix this we need to uh, separate uh, the tasks that each uh, the task here inside here into different classes okay so first let's start adding uh, with a logger system and uh, that logging logger class will handle the logging if an error happens okay so to adding the logger system i will just copy and paste this you see all of these can be inside the parent class but they will have different uh, subclasses names uh, so we are separating the concern i mean they can be inside this uh, same uh, cs file or you could also do you could also insert different cs files as well maybe we should add different cs files so it will be easier to manage so let's add a logger cs file okay in panel class logger so i will just uh, change it like this okay so we have an interface and with interface we define which methods this uh, inheriting class or uh, yes inheriting class should have so we have a logger class uh, that uses interface i logger and inside we are uh, constructing the methods we have a constructor we have info method we have debug method and we have error method you can fill anything inside here uh, the purpose of this lecture to demonstrate uh, how to do uh, proper solid design principles following programming so we also need to now uh, modify our uh, code oh we also need to add another class for mail messaging okay so let's add a mail sender uh, class All right let's name it as mail sender and inside here okay, make it as public class mail sender you see mail sender has only one purpose and it is sent email all right okay now finally we can modify our invoice class properly to be uh, following solid design principles and for that okay let's add another button you you know you can fill anything inside these methods okay and let's call it as proper single responsibility okay all right so I am going to add another class and I will say proper invoice. Okay, let's name it as proper invoice. Okay, we can leave it as internal as well for this demo. And let's copy and paste the code. Okay, so um, I also need to change uh, the constructor name. All right, so. What is the difference in this case? In this case, you see, uh, we have uh, iLogger and mail sender uh, as injection, dependency injection. Actually, not this. Okay. And then we use those uh, initialized uh, objects to add info or send email. Okay, you see and if an error occurs then uh, we are um, using the uh, error method uh, like here all right and why does it show error okay because i need to send it like this and in the other case we also modified 
like this. You see, instead of sending email directly inside, uh, in the first case, in the violation method, in the violation method, uh, methodology, we were sending mail directly like this. Uh, the code was also written in the same class. And we were also logging the errors like this. However, now we have separate classes for each task. We have a mail sender class and we have file logger. Okay. And uh, now we can use each one of them. So if we change anything in these separate uh, classes, that it won't affect uh, anything in our application uh, workflow runtime. Uh, this is a single uh, responsibility principle. And let's see if the author of this article said anything. Okay. As you can see, the invoice class delegating the logging activity to the logger class. In the same way, delegate the email sending activity to the mail sender class. Now, the invoice class now only concentrates on invoice related activities. All right, now we can move to the next response, uh, next uh, principle, which is open closed principle. What is the open closed principle in C Sharp? The open closed principle states that software entities such as modules, classes, functions, etc. should be open for extension, but closed for modification. Let us understand the above definition in simple words. Here we need to understand two things. The first thing is open for extension and the second thing is closed for modification. The open for extension means we need to design the software modules slash classes in such a way that the new responsibilities or functionalities should be added easily when new requirements come. On the other hand, closed for modification means we should not modify the class slash module until we find some bugs. The reason for this is we have already developed a class slash module and it has gone through the unit testing phase. So we should not have to change this as it affects the existing functionalities. In simple words, we can say that we should develop one module slash class in such a way that it should allow its behavior to be extended without altering its source code. Okay. Implementation guidelines for the open closed principle, OCP, in C Sharp. The easiest way to implement the open closed principle in C Sharp is to add the new functionalities by creating new derived classes which should be inherited from the original base class. Another way is to allow the client to access the original class with an abstract interface. So, at any given point of time when there is a change in requirement or any new requirement comes then instead of touching the existing functionality, it's always better and suggested to create new derived classes and leave the original class implementation as it is. Okay, so this is the key issue, uh, the key point. Whenever you need a new functionality, uh, then you, don't, you shouldn't uh, change the existing implementation. You should extend it and then implement that new feature with that extension. Okay, uh, this is really important, the key part of the uh, open closed principle by the way in an interview i was asked what is open closed principle and i was asked to explain it so this is really important problems of not following the open closed principle in c sharp if you are not following the open closed principle during the application development process then you may end up your application development with the following problems if you allow a class or function to add new logic then as a developer you need to test the entire functionalities which include the old functionalities as well as new functionalities of the application. As a developer, it is also your responsibility to tell the QA, quality assurance, team about the changes in advance so that they can prepare themselves in advance for regression testing along with the new feature testing. If you are not following the open closed principle, then it also breaks the single responsibility principle as the class or module is going to perform multiple responsibilities. 
If you are implementing all the functionalities in a single class, then the maintenance of the class becomes very difficult. Because of the above key points, we need to follow the open-closed principle in C-sharp while developing the application. Okay, so uh, let's start uh, coding it. The first example will be uh, an example that breaks open-closed uh, principle. Okay. Let's name it as example breaks open closet principle. All right. And let's copy and paste uh, the code. Okay. Um, so I'm going to add another class. Breaks open closet okay so let's check it out and what does that mean we have invoice class and that invoice class has get invoice discount which takes two parameters uh, which is amount and the invoice type so according to the invoice type we are uh, returning the uh, discount uh, discount amount and what is wrong here you see that uh, this method is doing a different task based on the invoice type okay so if i want to add another invoice type here and uh, let's say extra invoice then what do i need to do for implementation for implementation then i need to add more else if like this and you see as i add more uh, invoice types then i need to modify this existing class further and this totally breaks open closed principle because i am modifying the existing class method uh, for extending its functionality okay and this breaks the open closed principle and as explained in the article this forces us to retest uh, all of the functionality uh, and report to the quality assurance team and other things so i need to modify this in a way that it won't break it anymore uh, let's uh, make example of this in our application Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Now uh, let's fix it uh, in a way that it won't break our functionality. I mean the open closed principle. Okay. Let's say um, proper open closet principle. Okay. Okay. So, uh, what do we need to do is we need to generate a base class and extend it. In this case, it will be like this. Let's copy paste and analyze it. Let's add um, another class and name it as proper uh, open close up. Okay. So now we have a base class as invoice and this invoice class has a virtual method. Virtual methods can be overridden uh, uh, by the uh, inheriting classes and uh, it has a get invoice discount and double amount okay and it just deducts 10 point from the amount and return it then we have 
final invoice, which has a uh, get invoice discount method, and it overrides the base method uh, with double amount, then uh, it gets the base, it calls the base get invoice and minus 50. This is the final invoice. You see, these are the actually invoice types that we have in. Let me show again. Okay, uh, here we had final invoice, which was deducting uh, one hundred percent, and we had proposed, which was deducting fifty, and we had extra invoice, which was deducting seventy-five. So for final invoice, we need to deduct ninety actually to make it equal, and for proper proposed invoice it is minus 50 yeah this is correct and okay by the way when we provide emma okay yes it's true and there is in re re recurring invoice okay let's fix this um in our this case one moment here's Okay. Yeah. Now fix it. And uh, it is minus 30. Let's make it minus 65. Okay. So you see this is how we are extending uh the functionality of the class with inheritance. Okay. Uh I can add so many other uh new invoice types here, like um super invoice. Okay, and I can say that just minus five. Okay, so it is totally up to you to extend it now. It looks much better. It is easier to read. It is easier to manage and it won't break our existing code. It won't require retesting and validating our existing code because it is just extending uh, the base class. Okay. And let's make an example call of that. By the way, this is not valid anymore. So, yeah. Uh, in this case, uh, proper. Okay. Start. Okay. Um, so, you see, now I can define each one of them. Let's say recurring invoice. Recurring invoice. And then just I can say get invoice discount with something like this. Okay. All right. And yeah, they already made an example such that way. Now the invoice class is closed for modification, but it is open for the extension as it allows creating new classes deriving from the invoice class, which clearly follows the open closed principle in C sharp. In the next article. I okay, so let's move to uh, list of substitution principle and let's just read its definition. All right, okay. What is the Liskov substitution principle in C sharp? The Liskov substitution principle is a substitutability principle in object oriented programming language. This principle states that if S is a subtype of T, then objects of type T should be replaced with the objects of type S. In simple words we can say that, when we have a base class and child class relationships i.e. inheritance relationships, then, if we can successfully replace the object slash instance of a parent class with an object slash instance of the child class, without affecting the behavior of the base class instance, then it is said to be in Liskov substitution principle. If you are not getting this point properly, don't worry, we will see some real-time examples to understand this concept. For example, a father is a teacher whereas his son is a doctor. So here, in this case, the son can't simply replace his father even though both belong to the same family. Okay, so let's uh, make an example. First, we will make an example that violates uh, Liskov principle. Okay. This call principle violation. Okay. 
All right. So to demonstrate a violation of this code principle, I will just uh, add a class here. Okay, and we have two classes. The first class is apple and the second class is orange. You know, apples and oranges are totally different things. So, uh, we shouldn't be able to define apple as an orange and get its color. Okay, this is a violation. Let's, let's see what does that mean. Okay, so let's define first. Okay, this no violation apple dot. Okay, apple. And let's see, let's install apple. And let's say apple color. One second, sorry about that. And let's define okay uh, orange. Okay, this will be an orange. Let's say orange color. And now I am going to define uh, an apple from orange type. Okay. What does that mean? It means that something like this. Let's say apple orange. And let's get its color. Okay. Apple orange color. Okay. Orange type apple color. Nice. So what we want in this case is to get the type of I uh, get the color of orange, not the, uh, I mean, the get the type of apple, not the orange. Because this is apple type and orange can't replace it. However, in this case, we are going to get the color of orange instead of apple. Okay, so let's run our application to verify. We have apple color red, we have orange color red, and we have orange type color orange. By the way, we have an error here. And let's fix it. Okay, now it will be. Okay, apple color red, orange color orange, and we have orange type apple color orange. And this is the violation of uh, Lisko principle. Why? Because. As you can see in the above example, apple is the base class and orange is the child class, i.e., there is a parent child relationship. So, we can store the child class object in the parent reference variable i.e. apple apple equals new orange, and when we call the get color i.e. apple dot get color, then we are getting the color of the orange not the color of apple. That means once the child object is replaced i.e. apple storing the orange object, the behavior is also changed. Okay, this is the key issue. Uh, the behavior is changed and this is violation of uh, list of substitution principle this is against the lsp principle the liskov substitution principle in c sharp states that even the child object is replaced with the parent the behavior should not be changed so in this case if we are getting the color of apple instead of orange then it follows the liskov substitution principle so if we were seeing the color of apple then it would be following the liskov uh, substitution principle that means there is some issue with our software design. Let us see how to overcome the design issue and makes the application follow Liskov substitution principle. Okay. Okay, so let's make the uh, proper example. Okay, I will name it as Liskov uh, principle. All right. 
right? And let's add a new class as here proper visible visible. Oh, I have named it incorrectly. And let's copy and paste the code. Okay, so let's check out the difference. So now we have an abstract class, which is free. So in this abstract cl class, we have get color method, and it is also abstract as you can see. So any class uh, that inherits this abstract class has to define this method. So we have apple which has red and it is overriding uh, the abstract class in uh, the fruit uh, abstract class abstract method in the in the abstract class of fruit and we have orange you see we didn't override uh, the base class method we overrided the abstract class uh, method uh, different than the uh, first example and now let's make our test uh, in the same way uh, so this time it will be proper let's call principle okay and you see now i am not able to define apple uh, with the type of orange okay so let's call this as fruit orange and it will be fruit orange and you see how it makes sense now okay fruit orange and fruit apple okay yes and now it is much more sense making and it will work correctly Okay, apple color red, orange color orange, fruit orange color orange, and fruit apple color red. As expected, working perfectly fine, and it now follows the list code principle. Okay, now uh, time to see interface segregation principle. What is the interface segregation principle in C sharp? The interface segregation principle states that clients should not be forced to implement any methods they don't use. Rather than one fat interface, numerous little interfaces are preferred based on groups of methods with each interface serving one submodule. Let us break down the above definition into two parts. First, no class should be forced to implement any methods of an interface they don't use. Secondly, Instead of creating large or you can say fat interfaces, create multiple smaller interfaces with the aim that the clients should only think about the methods that are of interest to them. Sorry about that. It was my uh, baby child, uh, my daughter. Okay. As per the single responsibility principle of solid, like classes, interfaces also should have a single responsibility. That means we shouldn't force any class to implement any methods which they don't require. Okay, so you see how these uh, principles are, uh, let's say, tightly coupled. So one principle requires another principle, and when you follow all of them, they are working uh, like as a team. Okay, so let's start uh, with a violation of uh, interface segregation principle. All right. Okay, let's call it as violation of interface regulation. All right, and let's copy and paste our class so 
let's add a new class first interface violation and here first we have public interface i printer tasks okay and it defines uh, four methods uh, we can define uh, this abstract class method like this uh, return okay let's let's say white okay this will work by the way i need to uh, if i make it a method like this i have to mark it as virtual uh, so that it can it can be overridden uh, if i make it abstract like this then uh, i can uh, it can't have a body okay so you can define body inside an abstract class with a virtual method uh, that can be overridden or you can make it abstract and it won't have a body uh, it won't have a body in method okay okay uh, so for demonstration let's also have another class here as um, abstract class with body having method and let's say virtual get color and return one okay so both methodology is fine okay let's continue with our interface violation interface principle violation so we have i printer tasks and it has print scan fax and print duplex uh, methods interfaces can have a uh, method implementation but they can't have uh, they can't have fields data fields like public int okay my property now it says that interfaces cannot contain instance fields okay uh, so this is also valid uh, okay, let's remove it okay let's uh, return back to our topic so uh, we have i printer tasks and uh, not only that we have okay let's see hp laser uh, jet printer which uh, inherits i printer task interface so interfaces are uh, like blueprints and we have to implement each of the method define it in the interface uh in the abstract class that we don't have to implement all of them uh, actually that was also another uh, mistaken information that i have given uh, for example let's say we have okay abstract string uh, get color two and these methods uh have to implement them but uh we can also define a body for that method and now oh uh, it was true so in both cases we have to implement both okay so let's just ignore that too okay so i printer tasks uh is inherited with hp laser jet printer and now we are defining each one of the methods and you see uh, we have print scan fax and print duplex each one of them each one of the de uh, defined methods is also used here however let's say i also have uh, another class that inherits the iprinter tasks uh, interface and this is liquid inject printer and in liquid inject printer we don't have fax method or print duplex therefore they are not implemented exception uh, they are throwing not not implemented exception and this is a violation of uh, interface segregation principle why because uh, we are inheriting an interface but we are not using all of the methods that it requires okay and uh, so how can we fix this problem we can fix this problem by uh, splitting this interface into 
multiple interfaces and implementing necessary multiple interfaces in each class okay uh, so let's first define uh, this example then move to the proper uh, interface this uh, design okay for example okay and test okay now fix this uh, interface violation problem okay um proper interface segregation So let's fix the naming segregate segre segregation yes okay all right all right so let's add another class and see the example proper inter interface integration all right and let's copy paste the fix it uh, interface and class implementations okay so we did split the i printer tasks uh, in the first case in the first example into three interfaces the first one is i printer tasks it has print and scan what does this mean this means that every class that inherits i printer tasks interface will have these two methods okay so these are the uh, basic methods that every printer will have print and scan then we have i fax tasks which means that whichever the class in in inherits i fax tasks interface will have fax method and whichever the class that inherits i printer duplex tasks will have print duplex so since these are interfaces we can have multiple interfaces inheritance however uh, for abstract classes that uh, you can have only one uh, implementation yes uh, okay for example if we define two abstract classes such as okay and public abstract class ab2 then our class can inherit only one of them for example it can inherit ab1 and it has to come before any interfaces like this however if i also add ab2 here then it will say that uh, the base class cannot have multiple base classes i mean the base uh, the child class cannot have multiple base classes however it can have as many as interfaces uh, as necessary okay so the hp laser jet printer will have both print scan fax and print duplex uh, methods all of them and the liquid inject printer will have only print and scan which are the very basic uh, functions of printers okay so this is the uh, corrected way uh, the proper way of uh, interface segregation uh, principle okay now time to move the last one the last principle in the solid design principles is what uh, dependency inversion principle what is the dependency inversion principle in c sharp 
The dependency inversion principle, DIP, states that high-level modules slash classes should not depend on low-level modules slash classes. Both should depend upon abstractions. Secondly, abstractions should not depend upon details. Details should depend upon abstractions. The most important point that you need to remember while developing real-time applications, always to try to keep the high-level module and low-level module as loosely coupled as possible. When a class knows about the design and implementation of another class, it raises the risk that if we do any changes to one class will break the other class. So we must keep these high-level and low-level modules slash classes loosely coupled as much as possible. To do that, we need to make both of them dependent on abstractions instead of knowing each other. Okay, so let's start with an example to understand better. Okay. Okay. Okay, I'm adding a button. Violation of dependency inversion. Dependency inversion. Okay. Let's click and oh, we also need to fix this as proper interface uh, separation. Okay, and then I can call print of X. Okay, so. Uh, let's add a new class for dependency inversion violation. All right. And in here, let's copy and paste the code. Okay, we have a public class employee and it has four uh, attributes. Uh, which are ID, uh, name, department, and salary. And we have public class, employee, business logic. Okay. And we have public class data access factory. Let's paste it in above the employee data access. And... Okay. We also have, okay, one second, here, yes, now all is fixed, okay, one second, so we have employee class, which holds the data of each employee, we have employee data access class, uh, which implements the logic of accessing employee data. You see it has a public method that returns employee data. Uh, it is named as get employee details. It takes ID of the employee. Uh, then it generates an employee, an example employee and returns it. Okay, and we have two other classes which are data access factory. Uh, it has a public static method uh that returns a new instance of employee data access class okay and we have employee business logic class which implements employee data access which uses employee data access and generates an instance of employee data access class in the constructor and it returns the details okay so how is this uh, violating the dependency inversion okay okay let's read it to find out let us compare the above example with the dependency inversion principle in c sharp as per the dependency inversion principle definition a high-level module should not depend on low-level modules. Both should depend on the abstraction. So, first, we need to figure out which one is the high-level module, class, 
and which one is the low-level module, class, in our example. A high-level module is a module that always depends on other modules. So, in our example, the employee business logic class depends on employee data access class, so here the employee business logic class is the high-level module and the employee data access class is the low-level module. So, as per the first rule of the dependency inversion principle in C-sharp, the employee business logic class slash module should not depend on the concrete employee data access class slash module, instead, both the classes should depend on abstraction. The second rule of the dependency inversion principle state that abstractions should not depend on details. Details should depend on abstractions. Before understanding this let us first understand what is an abstraction. What is abstraction? In simple words, we can say that abstraction means something which is non-concrete. So, abstraction in programming means we need to create either an interface or abstract class which is non-concrete so that we cannot create an instance of it. In our example, the employee business logic and employee data access are concrete classes that mean we can create objects of it. As per the dependency inversion principle in C-sharp, the employee business logic, high-level module, should not depend on the concrete employee data access, low-level module, class. Both classes should depend on abstractions, meaning both classes should depend on either an interface or an abstract class. Okay, so let's see how employee business logic is depending on concrete uh, employee data access in our application. And we are uh, right away seeing it. So you see, okay, okay, as you can see, it is dependent on uh, the concrete instance of employee data access class with here. And that is a violation of uh, dependency uh, inversion principle. So we need to modify our logic with abstraction, abstract classes or interfaces. Uh, instead of uh, depending on a concrete uh, instance of a class. Okay, uh, so let's make example of this with um, violation and um, okay. Actually, let's define this, yes. Okay. Here. Employee. Get employee details and like this, yes. Okay, so uh, let's also see the proper fixed version of uh, dependency inversion. Right, it will be proper uh, dependency inversion. Okay, and Let's add another class and name it as proper depend version. Okay. So how are we gonna separate? We are going to separate it as an interface I employee data access which has employee get employee details method. And we are going to have okay employee data access class which inherits i employee data access uh, interface we have data access okay factory uh, which still has the same method and we have uh, employee business logic you see in this case it has uh, a field of I employee data access. Okay. 
and I employ data access is uh, an interface um, therefore it is using the uh, interface instead of concrete instance of a class so employee data access was a class therefore this was a concrete instance however in here we are just using uh, the interface instead of a concrete instance of a class and uh, this is the proper way of doing uh, dependency inversion uh, okay okay that's it. We have implemented the dependency inversion principle in our example where the high level module, employee business logic, and low level module, employee data access, depend on abstraction, I employee data access. Also, abstraction, I employee data access, does not depend on details, employee data access, but details depend on abstraction. Advantages of implementing the dependency inversion principle in C sharp. Now, the employee business logic and employee data access classes are loosely coupled classes because employee business logic does not depend on concrete employee data access class, instead, it includes a reference of I employee data access interface. So now, we can easily use another class that implements I employee data access with a different implementation. Okay, uh, this is it, and let's also make an example of this. Proper dependency inversion, and we have I employee logic domain logic equal to okay. Okay, and now when we run on our application, it will compile. Okay, uh, if you have any questions, you can join our Discord channel. Um, uh, also, um, I will upload this into a GitHub repository and I will put the link of the repository in the description of the video. So make sure that you check it out. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope you have enjoyed it. Uh, please make a comment and let me know what you think. Hopefully see you later.